Welcome to part 5. In the previous video we have set the stage for modifying our login application and we said we wanted to introduce a root and a home page uh, to the original widget hierarchy. Uh, we spent some time refactoring our authentication code so that um, the important code that was running uh, Firebase authentication uh, has been moved inside this uh, alt class and in this video I'm going to show you how to implement the new root and home pages. So the first thing that we're gonna do is actually quite simple. We're just going to create a new root page and uh, we are going to have that root page called directly into the login page. So let's create a new file and we're going to call this root page.dart and we're going to define it as a class root page extends and this is going to be a stateful widget. As usual we must not forget to import uh, our material package so that everything can be found and as usual because we are defining this as a stateful widget we actually want to implement the create state method and as usual we also going to define our root page state which extends state of root page and this class will have uh, a build method inside uh, let's clean up things a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna use the arrow function here to return a new root page state and let's fix the indentation a little bit as well. Uh, so one thing I wanted to do really was to say that I'm going to import the login page and I'm gonna ask this root page directly to return a new login page. We know that this login page also requires an authentication parameter and we're going to have to provide this authentication parameter to the root page as well. So we're going to import it first. We're going to say final base alt alt just in the same way that we did this when we uh, modified our login uh, page previously. So once this is uh, accessible, we can pass it uh, through widget out. And our root page, I think now it's very simple and all it does is return a, return a new login page. We're going to modify our main app to import the root page that we just created. And here we're just gonna swap the name. So all we've done is just essentially introduce an, a new intermediate node between the app and the login page. We call this the root page and we are now ready to add some code to it and make it a little bit more interesting. So the next thing that we are going to do is to define a new uh, piece of state that we are going to use to determine whether the user is signed in or not. So we are going to do this by creating a new enumeration and we're going to call this old status. And this can take two cases, which is not signed in and signed in. We are then uh, going to say that this root page state has an old status, um, old status, which is going to be old status dot not signed in initially. In here, when we create uh, our uh, login page, we now can start drafting up a conditional which will say that if the alt status is of type uh, alt status dot not signed in, then we are going to return the login page. But if our alt status is alt status dot signed in then in this case we're just going to return a new container and this is what just what we'll be using for now so this container will have a child and we're going to create this as a new text uh, which will have the value welcome 
we will uh, actually refactor this little bit of code later into a separate uh, widget uh, class that we will define into a new file but for now I just wanted to get uh, the code to compile. So we have defined this enumeration called old status here with two cases however we are not really making much use of it at the moment and in fact we just set it to not sign in initially and never change this value and, and really what we want to do is check whether the user is signed in or not. And in order to do that, I need to introduce a new method from the Firebase Authentication API. And uh, I'm just gonna show you what this method is like. Uh, I'm going to implement it directly within our auth class, which holds all the Firebase code that we've written so far. And I'm going to just define this method like this. Uh, so I'm going to call this current user which is going to be asynchronous and this is going to say fire base user user is await firebase alt dot instance dot current user and then return user dot uid now what does this method do we can easily find out in fact if we common click to inspect the implementation, it says asynchronously get a current user or null if there is none. Now, what is important about this is that this will always give us a valid user as long as the uh, user has signed in uh, previously with email and password or has registered. Uh, however, it will always return null if, if we never completed uh, login successfully. And this also applies when we, for example, close the app and, and start it up again. So it sounds like this is what we want to do uh, to use to check uh, what our alt status is. Um, in order for this method to be visible to our root page, we also need to export it into base alt. And if we now go into this root page, we can do something with it. Now, one thing that I'm going to do, and this is a new concept, is that I'm going to implement a method called init state. And what this method does is uh, it's a method that is called every time a stateful widget is created. So before the build method is called to create the widget tree, uh, we always get init state. And this is an opportunity to configure any initial state uh, in our uh, widget. So because init state is called before uh, widget build is called, then this is the right place to check for the current user. So um, the way we can do this is to say widget dot out dot current user. And normally we would say here a wait and and uh, and assign the result a variable. However, the problem with init state is that it's not really declared as an asynchronous method and because of that we can't really use a wait in here. So the alternative to that is to say that when we get the current user we then say we're gonna have a user ID. Let me just type it and I explain it in a second. So because current user returns a future that means that uh, when the future returns a value, then we can take the resulting value and use it to execute some code. So in particular, here we want to say set state. And this is where we are going to update the authorization status of our widget. And the way we do it is to say that if the user ID is uh, null, for example, then the authorization status will be uh, not signed in. Otherwise, it will be authorization status dot signed in. So let me just repeat once more. What this code does is to check what is the status of the current user when we initially start the app. And we're going to see uh, how useful this is in a second. So I just restarted the app on the simulator and let's see how this looks like. Um, this is, seems a little bit strange. I can see this welcome text in red at the top and uh, it matches with the text we added for our alt status.signin. 
which confirms that the old status has been updated uh, and, and we received a user ID because we did previously authenticate with the app. Um, I want to fix this text with the two underlines. I've actually encountered this problem before. So if you ever see this, I'm going to tell you what the solution for this is. And the reason is that I haven't had a scaffold around my container. And so some elements that are the Flutter is trying to render uh, don't have the right material uh, styles associated with it. So always remember to uh, create all your widget trees embedded within a scaffold. So if I do this and now refresh, I can now see a white text and a very small welcome text uh, in the middle right there. So, um, at the moment, we don't really have a way out of this screen, so I want to temporarily comment out this uh, line so that uh, for the time being, the old status will always be not signed in. Uh, I'm going to restart the application and make sure that when I come back to it, I'm back on, on the login screen. Okay, so I've just restarted the app once again, and I can see that I'm now back on the login screen. Uh, so one thing that I now want to do is that when the user enters the email and password and then taps on login, uh, nothing currently happens because really there is no way for the login page to communicate back to the root uh, page that we have created. And if you remember, that was one of the steps that we wanted to do. When we sign in or create a new user, we want to send a message back to the root and, and inform uh, this widget that its state needs to change to old status dot signed in. So we are going to do that now. And the way we are going to implement this is to provide a new parameter to the login page. And we are going to call this uh, final, and this is going to be a void callback, which is a shorthand for a a uh, function or method that takes no parameters and, and returns no parameters. And we're going to call this on signed in. We're going to make sure that the caller has a way of providing this parameter to the login page. And what we want to do is to make sure that once we sign in or once we create a user, we are now able to call back into this uh, new handler that we've added. And so we are going to say on signed in. And this will ensure that uh, the root page can receive uh, a new message from the login page. Of course, we need to here uh, specify a callback handler for on signed in. And so we are going to create a new method, which is going to be avoid uh, signed in and we can call this method from here and the way we are going to implement this is to say that we're going to set the state uh, and this time we can say that old status is now old status dot uh, signed in So with this change in place, we should be able to hot reload. And if we try to sign in with our usual test account, I say test one, two, three, four, and we try to sign in, we are back to the splash screen with the welcome text that we introduced before. So it seems like we have managed to go back from the login page to the root page by providing a, a method callback. The next thing we're gonna do will be to build out our home page so that we can welcome our users and give them the opportunity to sign out and go back to the login page. And we will be doing this on the next video.